More than 100 journalists were arrested or detained. Many were assaulted by police with batons, pepper spray and rubber bullets. Some are even facing trial for charges brought against them. No, this isn't China or Belarus. This was here. This was America. And today marks an important day in an ongoing fight for press freedoms. Yes, here in the US, Andrea Sahuri, a reporter with the Des Moines Register, was acquitted of all misdemeanor charges brought against her while she was reporting on the unrest following George Floyd's killing last year. Have a listen to the verdict and watch the reaction of the woman behind Sahuri. The matter of State of Iowa versus Andrea May Sahori, case number SMAC 388817. On the charge of failure to disperse, we find the defendant, Andrea May Sahori, not guilty. On the charge of interference with official acts, we find the defendant, Andrea May Sahori, not guilty. That was Andrea Sahuri's mother, relieved to hear of her daughter's acquittal. Just moments after it was announced, Sahuri tweeted about her historic victory. But why was she prosecuted in the first place? Last year, during the height of the protest, she was covering looting at a mall on May the 31st. Sahuri was live tweeting updates about how the protests were going, how stores had been broken into, and posted photos of police using tear gas on crowds of people. Later that day, police pepper sprayed and arrested her, and then boyfriend Spencer Robinette as they cleared a crowd. The two were charged for not leaving the scene, and Andrea Sahuri wasn't the only journalist attacked or arrested while covering the mass protests last year. It happened to MSNBC's own Ali Velshi. He was reporting in Minneapolis when he was hit with a rubber bullet fired by police. Do you mind whoa, 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 whoa. Me why I'm under arrest, sir? And that's why, CNN why reporter Omar arrest? Jimenez being arrested on air while reporting from the scene. Photographer Linda Tirado was blinded in one eye after police fired foam bullets on a crowd. According to the US press freedom tracker, almost 400 journalists were assaulted last year and more than 120 were detained or arrested while covering the protests. That's more than the previous three years combined and it happened all over the country. Most of those charges filed against journalists were eventually dropped but Sahuri and about a dozen others were set to face trial after today's acquittal of her and Robinette. Many hope this re-establishes the right of journalists to document history, including chaotic moments in this country, without the kind of fear that journalists in non-democratic nations have had to face. Unfortunate as it is to say, attacks on journalists rose to a new high during Trump's era. Reporters Without Borders ranks the US as 45th on its World Press Freedom Index, below nearly all of our Western allies when it comes to press safety. And the Committee to Protect Journalists blames Trump, pointing to his administration's hostility towards the press. They say Trump's behavior helped exacerbate a wave of global media pressure, repression, including a record number of journalists who have now been imprisoned. So much for lecturing the rest of the world on freedom of speech or freedom of the press, right? But with a new US administration, we can only hope that journalists like Andrea Sahuri are not punished for doing their jobs. In her testimony yesterday, she had this to say about the importance of the role journalists play here and abroad. It's important for journalists to be on the scene and document what's happening. Um, you know, we wouldn't know what's going on right now, you know, if no reporters were on the scene. And it's a historical moment. I mean, protests erupted not just across the country, but all over the world. And I felt like I was playing a part of that. Um, I know we're a small, it's a small city here, but it's important to the community. People, it's important to know what's going on and to document that. So that's the role I felt like I was playing that day. Joining me now to discuss the significance of Andrea Sahuri's trial and today's verdict is political commentator and former Des Moines Register reporter Jason Noble. Uh, Jason, thanks for coming on the show. Were you at all worried the verdict today might not have acquitted Andrea? Was there a very real possibility of her going to prison for her reporting? Well, uh, I mean, I was certainly on the edge of my seat uh, for the two hours or so that the jury was deliberating. Uh, you know, when it's up to a jury, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, that said... The case here was was very, very clearly uh, in her favor. I mean, the, the prosecution's argument was was basically ridiculous. And and it was hard to see how uh, any thoughtful jury could really vote to to convict her, given the facts of this case. And what does it say about the state of media and press freedoms in the U.S. when we have journalists on trial to begin with? for covering 
protests. I mean, it's it's obviously very, very concerning. Uh, I mean, the the facts of this case uh, are just are just ridiculous. I mean, we there, there's no way like let, let's talk about what happened here. Uh, Andrea Sarhuri was sprayed with pepper spray, which should not have happened while she was on assignment for a major metropolitan newspaper. Yeah. She was arrested. She was charged. And over the course of 10 months, the prosecutor stuck to their guns and decided to bring this to trial. I mean, it was just a farce at every level. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think that, you know, the role of journalists is to hold the powerful to account. And in a democracy, the powerful cannot use their power to stifle that. That's not how it works. And, yeah. I mean, justice was done here. Uh, a jury of her peers listened to the facts of this case and found her not guilty. But it is uh, very distressing yeah. to see that a prosecutor used his power to pursue this to this ridiculous extreme. Yes, the point being that it shouldn't have happened in the first place. A lot of people might not know this, but even though the First Amendment guarantees that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or the press, the First Amendment doesn't actually give journalists any particular privileges to go places the public can't go. It's just been the case that prosecutors don't pursue charges against reporters covering protests. Why do you think in this case they went after Sahuri and the other journalists who might still face trial? Was it something particular about the nature of those protests, that moment in American politics? Um, you know, I, I have to imagine that that, that, that played into it. Uh, the prosecutor in this case, uh, John Sarcone, who's been the, the county prosecutor here for 30 years, uh, he said nothing about this case for months leading up to this week's trial. Just this evening, uh, he gave his first on the record uh, quotes about it uh, in a story in the Washington Post and essentially accused Ms. Sarhuri of participating in the, prote in, in the protests uh, and sort of used that as the rationale for, uh, for this arrest and these charges. Uh, I mean, the, the facts of the case clearly debunk that, um, but but even so, I mean, th this was this was not a good use of of, the, of taxpayers' money and and time, and is it's also chilling effect on on journalism. Yeah, the chilling effect, and it's also the kind of rhetoric that we hear in countries abroad that we criticize for human rights records. It's exactly the kind of rhetoric we hear from prosecutors and people in power about the journalists that they've arrested and prosecuted. Are oh, they really activists? They're really not journalists. Um, in a 2019 report, Jason, Reporters Without Borders blamed Donald Trump for the rise in hostility towards journalists in the US, uh, pointed to him calling journalists the enemies of the people, accusing uh, reputable outlets of spreading fake news, saying broadcast license should be removed, uh, barring outlets from attending his press conferences, as a reporter yourself, did you feel like your job changed, that your personal security situation changed during the Trump years? Um, you know, there were certainly situations that I was in that, you know, were uh, w where there was sort of that, the, the Trump, uh, you know, the, that, that atmosphere pervaded. I covered the Republican National Convention uh, in 2016. And that was, you know, we took, um, you know, crisis training before we went and, and covered the convention, uh, you know, much because of the, the rhetoric and the, the high tensions around an event like that. I mean, there's no question that, you know, five years uh, sort of at the apex of American politics, Donald Trump changed the conversation and, and really poisoned it uh, against journalists. I'm, I'm hopeful that you know, we had a pretty clear cut case here where uh, the press, uh, the freedom of the press was was on trial. The reporter was clearly in the right uh, and a jury of her peers acquitted her. And, and hopefully that is a commentary on uh, sort of where we are and uh, the way that people are are interpreting the work that journalists do. And you said you're hopeful. Donald Trump is still around. Uh, claims of fake news are still around. There's still huge distrust when it comes to the media. According to a Gallup poll from September, only 9% say they trust mass media a great deal, while 33% say not at all. And this distrust, of course, precedes Trump. Uh, as a journalist, I wonder this myself, but what's it going to take to change that, in your view? Is it even possible to rebuild the trust that's been lost? Well, I, I certainly think it's, it's possible. I, I, 
I think it could take a while. I think the journalists just have to keep doing the essential job that they have, which is to hold the powerful accountable and to reveal uh, the truth about what's happening in our world and our society. Andrea uh, Sahori was doing that on that night in May when she was out covering protests. Uh, and that's, that's incumbent on every journalist. And Andrea Sahuri was acquitted, uh, which is, I think, very good news for not just her, but for the media as a whole. Uh, Jason Noble, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.